Previously on Infra, Mark found the way to the surface. I can't believe it either. On my first playthrough, seeing the sun here was invigorating. After a titan can find Act 2, this is a whole new life. Finally outside. I think the office is on the other side of this bay. There's the sun. It's setting though. Better hurry. I still have nine packs of batteries left. A geocache. So, that was the musical introduction to the world of outside. To take the wind out of your sails, the first couple of puzzles are of the box and platforming variety. The bridge is where the ghastly puzzles live, but I'll walk past it for one photo. The barge on the right is labelled Whiprock Shipping. Whiprock Island is supposed to be the location of Infra's announced DLC. It's a prison island. I don't think Mark visits prisons in a regular story. Or a hospital for that matter. An abandoned hospital with a rundown radiotherapy unit. Investigating the case of someone nicking the radiation source for scrap metal. And then joking over dead children again. Never happens. There's a sneaky box here. So, problem solved, you may be thinking. Ha. <laughs> And he huffed and puffed, and he climbed the scaffolding made of sticks. Okay, I need to get higher. Let's grab the box. Nope, fuck you. The box is out of reach. This is where the puzzle starts. Is the bridge okay? It is, that's strange. Let's check out this utility shed. Left page. There were complaints about the concrete, but it's good enough. Right page. The concrete's shit, needs constant repairs, however it does mean more work in the future. Also, there used to be hobos under the bridge. Interesting. Is there anything I can steal? Still eight packs of batteries left. That's nine packs of flashlight batteries. Ah, shit. Still, that may be the first time you've heard eight batteries left. So, I come here to get a key to get a box. If Infra goes full adventure game logic, 
I quit. Now comes the exciting part, where I need to use the box to bring the box over to the other side. Can't do it here, can't do it where I jumped. It has to be here. And yes, water is effectively an instant death pit. I can't reach the crate like this. Alright, the first part of the puzzle wasn't too bad, was it? Finally, I have the honor of getting onto the damn bridge. Goodbye, stupid scaffolding. Is that train going to start now, suddenly? I'm onto your train. How the fuck am I supposed to get it? Oh, I'll use the mooring bit. Bear with me, I've done it. This is my second recording of the level. Gotcha. Let's get this where it is actually helpful. Okay, I think that's all here. Can I grab it? Of course not. If only I had a box, I could climb here. Fine, maybe there's another box somewhere. This looks like a lift. But I'm not going to touch it because I know something that you don't. Here's the trick. You use the lift while the lights here are on and the generator shuts down. So I'll turn it off. And the lift comes down and shorts the generator, I suppose. Now for the final touch. I need to restart the engine and turn the lights back on, or else I'll regret it. Hey, keycard! So, why oh why do I need these lights on? Well, look at this cable. It goes all the way to that door. Which happens to be the keycard door. It's a decent puzzle. Even with all the boxes. How do I get it up there? I 
Ah, shit, I should not have done that. I'll try to shimmy there. Mark, where's your cat-like grace? Come on, Mark, put your ass into it. Whoops. Let's try it again, but without the whole getting wet and going home part, okay, Mark? The solution to the puzzle is so awkward that even when I'm making progress, I'm not sure I'm doing it the intended way. The guide essentially doesn't acknowledge the scaffolding exists. Perhaps it didn't in an earlier version of the game. I'm still watching it rain. Here's where you normally learn you need the power down there. Is this central Stalberg? It looks oddly rural. There's the wind blowing, but the clouds don't move. Someone should get that fixed. Well, there goes power. Robin did mention blackouts. I'll be back for this pack. Let's go on a nature hike. The note earlier mentioned hobos under the bridge. Not this bridge. They'd have to be really short hobos. Be careful not to go too deep. That makes ten packs of batteries for the flashlight. Yay, I'm back to the normal count. Mark is not welcome. Hello? This is one well-off bear. Is that actual money? That bear's got some real cash. And I get, um... Another one. A geocache. And that's all I can ever hope to get under this bridge. Incidentally, collectibles-wise, Act 3 dials things down a bit, and Mark again needs only half of the documents to qualify for the secret ending. Act 2 was a bit silly in that regard. You know, it's producing surprisingly little smoke for a coal power plant, which is on fire and has a fire in the coal bunker. There aren't any fire engines either. Perhaps it was all a dream. I still have nine packs of batteries left. That makes ten packs of camera batteries. Does Infra still randomize license plates? Looks like it. There's only one way to go then, up through the window.
Act 3 is mostly set above ground and in the heart of the city, so a dilapidated building here and there is inevitable. I wonder what this used to be. It has locker rooms. I still have nine packs of batteries left. That makes ten packs of batteries for the flashlight. No, I can't. This must be a dust and firewood warehouse. Where can I go from here? Is that a person? Yeah, it's a human person, and not a weirdo in a mask. Let's see if I have any luck in talking to him. Red sneakers, huh? He's pretending Mark is not here, wouldn't you? Unfortunately, the only apparent way down is to hop onto those beams, and then hop onto the lower level. So, that guy is the first person Mark can approach and directly contact since the office. Watch this. He does the sensible thing on seeing a helmeted swamp thing jump onto a rusty bundle. He remembers he's got business elsewhere. Let's follow. Where is he? He's left something. Stalberg Underground is a cult, with members wearing white masks as per urban legend. They offer home to the homeless, but the people they take never come back. There may be a whole underground city. Entry. Mm. This fire only works once? Does this door work? Joy, another dark building. Really dark. Oh, I know these. Let's climb. Mark has this habit of hiding the light when he's mantling. Is that a mushroom lantern? A gate key. That should help. I still have nine packs of batteries left. That makes ten packs of batteries for the flashlight. Let's go and see what this key unlocks. Wait a moment. I've got one more photo to take. Oh, there's a gate up there too. Can I go through here? Down the alley is the normal person's exit from the level. But there is also the cave, which takes you to the very same level and gets you collectible. Someone might be living here. 
I hope the shroom lanterns are not a regular thing in the rest of the city. There's another bear. I think it's the third one in the level. Perhaps they were an abandoned collectible type? This secret-ish passage to the right warrants a check. Another one. The label on the box says Official Geostash. And below that, an official game piece, not litter. Is there a game going? This looks kind of neat. It does. What is it? Some kind of bioluminescent moss? Wouldn't it be nice if I could take a secret boat in an earlier level and skip all the way here? I still have nine packs of batteries left. That makes ten packs of batteries for the flashlight. That's a nice shimmering effect. It looks better without a light. Okay, it is a great spot, but I've got to move. And in the very same level that has this, there is a dead static skybox. Oh, Mark can light lamps with his fingers. Or with his vision. In any case, he can summon fire without flint or tinder. That's a bit of an abrupt transition. Next time, Mark hits the streets of Stalberg proper.